So, um, I think it was very interesting, the opening speech we, ha we heard from uh, Roger Holm and, and, and Batsela talking about the future. Uh, here I will focus a little bit more on an immediate challenge that we have in just a couple of, <coughs> couple of months' time, uh, when the new sulfur uh, regulation hits 1st of January uh, 2020. Um, but first, a little bit about Alfa Laval and Alfa Laval in the marine industry and Alfa Laval on board. This we are very proud of. Uh, we have uh, nowadays 17 products or applications that goes on, uh, on uh, ships. Uh, the, mo the more traditional uh, Alfa Laval, the, the, the classic equipment that uh, many people are familiar ab uh, around is the, uh, the separators and the, fi uh, the filters and fuel conditioning systems for uh, fuel treatment. Uh, we have uh, heating and cooling application by plate heat exchangers. Uh, also, uh, with the same technology, desalination, uh, fresh water production. Uh, in 2011, uh, Alfa Laval acquired and we merged together with Allboy Industries. In, in, in that acquisition, we got uh, additional products with the, with the boiler and the waste heat recovery system. Together with Allboy, we have also uh, developed a uh, exhaust gas cleaning system uh, with the scrubber technology from Allboy and, and the separation uh, technology from Alfa Laval uh, taking care of the water cleaning uh, part when you run the scrubbers in, in, in closed loop. Uh, many of you have heard about our engagement in ballast water treatment, which is a uh, um, joint venture with uh, Valenius Water, and we were quite early in developing the ballast water treatment system, uh, the first commercial system already in place 2006. Uh, and as you know now, we are in the implementation phase of the ballast water systems uh, due from, from this year until 2024. Last but not least, uh, we, uh, we do have a sister company uh, also present at the stand, uh, Framo, that uh, are very familiar at uh, the island of uh, Donse. And they run uh, their, their own operations uh, from uh, Bergen and they then provide the cargo pumping system. So Framo, uh, they run the, the uh, cargo pumping system and uh, Alfa Laval sell the rest of the 17, uh, 16 products. But okay, a little bit into today's uh, topic. Uh, now a little bit about, and this, this may be repetition for, for many of you, but the fuel landscape will change uh, within very short. Uh, 1st of January 2020, um, there will be uh, the sulfur cap. And that means that uh, we will go from a 3.5% sulfur contact in, in the fuel down to 0 0.5, which is actually a quite big reduction, 86%. So this is valid from, from 1st of January 2020. This is only four months away. So, after that date, how, how are you uh, ship operators going to be compliant? Of course, you can still run on the 3.5 uh, sulfur content fuel if you have a scrubber that cleans the exhaust gas. If you do not have that, you then have to choose some of the other alternatives. There are many abbreviations here. But the first one, 0.5, it's very low sulfur fuel oil, and the 0.1 used in certain uh, ICA areas is the ultra low sulfur fuel. So those are the two alternatives um, that you can choose. Of course, uh, if technically possible, you can maybe choose uh, LNG uh, or LPG, methanol, others. Uh, and of course, distillate fuels that doesn't contain any sulfur. 
So this is the way you, you uh, uh, can comply uh, after 1st uh, of January. So, how will the fuel look like in the future? And this, this is a study that is made by the Boston Consulting Group. And you see the, the uh, first of all, what you see is, is uh, the growth. Uh, you have the total growth in fuel uh, demand. And this is very much, if you, if you heard on Roger Holm's uh, presentations before from Wärtsilä, that there is a, gra uh, there is a um, growth in the, in the world uh, fleet. Which, of course, is a, this is a big challenge in the future then for the greenhouse uh, house, uh, gases. But more immediate, what you see here, you have the heavy fuel oil, the 3.5, that will then drastically go down in the 2020 to approximately 10%. And those are the ships that today have scrubbers installed and can run on the high sulfur fuel. What Boston Consulting Group, they are predicting, you see that this is then increasing to 30% in, in 2030. And this is, of course, just a prediction. But in, in, in this sense, oh, uh, in this sense uh, it means that more scrubbers will be um, installed, either retrofits or new builds, uh, to come to that figure of 30%. The rest is then a mix between distillates uh, and very low uh, sulfur uh, oils. And still, uh, also, uh, um, what you can see here, the, the, the part of LNG is still quite small, coming up to 2030. Okay, so what does this mean then for ship operators um, to move from this heavy fuel to the 0 0.5 compliant fuel? And here is one important thing, of course. This is not the distillate product. It contains both distillate products and residual fuel. So it's a blend. And that means that you will have uh, water content. You will have catalytic fines. Catalytic fines being the, the, uh, the, the, the abrasive particles that comes from the refinery process that you want to remove before the engine, because you can have engine uh, damage on cylinder liners and so on. And then asphaltines uh, creating, uh, that could create a problem when you mix different fuels. Um, so this, this is basically what, what it will uh, look like. The first, the first point, as I said, it's a, uh, uh, it's a mix of uh, different fuels, but also, the average viscosity will probably uh, will decrease compared to the ordinary heavy fuel. Uh, and you will see a wide range, depending how you mix the fuels, uh, on the viscosity. Also, the density uh, will decrease, and catalytic fines will still be present in these uh, fuels. Of course, not over the, the maximum uh, limit of uh, 60, 60 ppm. So, uh, what kind of challenges does this uh, then come when, you, when, when it comes to fuel treatment on board uh, a ship? Uh, you could end up in, in problems when you start mixing fuels that there are in, uh, you, you run into incompatibility problem. And that will then occur in the fuel line from, from the day tank and the, uh, from the settling tank and then it will end up in the, in the purifier separators or in the filter. Everything will just clog up. Uh, so one important message is that, that uh, for ship operators is that uh, you need to, to spend a little bit more attention to, to uh, this and, and uh, then gain some knowledge on, on fuel blending so you don't end up in these kind of problems. In general, uh, using a, a separator, a purifier, with the ALCAP system, uh, that will save you a lot of uh, time because this automatically um, adjusts the cleaning process to, to various fuels. Then, 
Moving on to, to, uh, to uh, the, the later stage after the purifier in, 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 the, um, in the fuel chain, uh, you have the booster systems, which now can be upgraded to, to, uh, to handle uh, many different kinds of fuel. And also we have uh, the recently launched uh, new 10 micron filter to protect the engine at the end. In addition to that, uh, there is some, uh, some possibility to, uh, to better control the whole fuel line, uh, which uh, we use the term adaptive fuel line. And, and, and in normal systems today, uh, you are circulating a lot of fuel. It is circulating around much more than the fuel consumption in the engine. So what, what you do here is actually to measure, with, with some few components installed, uh, a VFD, um, a controller, uh, some, of, uh, some valves and so on, and a flow meter on, on the actual uh, fuel consumption, uh, you will only treat uh, as much as the fuel, that the, as the engine uh, consume, consumes. What does this bring as advantage? Of course, you need you have a less load on your separator, and that means less energy uh, needed for, uh, for operating the separator. That's one thing, but the more importantly, when the flow goes down in, in a purifier, and you use a, a, a lower flow, the separation efficiency will go up, and this goes up uh, quite drastically. Um, That was basically the short uh, presentation I had uh, from, from uh, Alpha Laval. Uh, but I would say that um, I think that uh, the, the, um, the challenge now is when, uh, when you have uh, uh, these new fuels coming into market, you need to, s to uh, spend a little bit more time, a little bit more attention to your fuel treatment line aboard on board, uh, just to avoid any surprises in the end. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> of course. This can happen anywhere. Thank you so much, uh, Ingrid. Uh, now let's see if I am... Like that? Ah, oh, that's good. Uh, thank you, Ulrik, for this presentation. Um, what, what, is, uh, what is your advice to the, to the ship operators uh, regarding the, the fuels 2020? Yeah, I mean, since it's only four months away, and, and uh, I suppose that many people already started in looking into this, but, but uh, uh, one thing is, of course, uh, to try out the new fuels and uh, to see how they operate uh, on, on board. And then, of course, put a little bit more focus on the, on the whole fuel treatment plant. Do you have the right separators? Uh, do we have the right uh, cleaning in place systems? What about the heating? Everything will, will affect the separation efficiency, and the separator is there to protect the engine, so uh, the major a assets you have on every ship. So um, mm. uh, a little bit higher on the agenda, I would say, if it's not there already. Yeah. So that's my uh, advice. That's your advice. Mm. Thank you so much.